Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the set difference operation in relational algebra. We know basically there are six fundamental relational algebra operations. Number one, the select. Number two, project. Number three, union. We have already elaborately focused on these three topics in the previous presentations and we are left with three more fundamental operations, the set difference, the Cartesian product and the rename operation. In this presentation, we are going to focus our attention towards the fourth fundamental operation, which is the set difference operation. Let's directly step into the topic of the day, the set difference. We know basically a relation is a set. And we know that there is a close correspondence between the relational concept in DBMS with the set concept in mathematics. And what operation is matching for this? It is like the same set difference operation in the set theory. So whatever we are going to see the set difference in the RDBMS in the relational algebra, which is like the same as that of the set difference operation in set theory. And the name itself says that it's the set difference. So obviously it requires two tables or two relations, right? So this is a binary operation where it takes two relations as the input and produces one relation as the output. And what's the logic of this set difference? The logic is this set difference operation is used to find the tuples that are in one relation, but they are not in another relation. Say if we have two relations R and S. Say if we perform R minus S, what does it mean? So that's what the next point says. R minus S means we are going to find the tuples that are in R but not in S. So it means we have two relations R and S. There are certain tuples in R and certain tuples in S. And the output of R minus S is going to be the set of tuples in R where these tuples are not there in S. No worries, when we see an example, it will be easy for you to understand. And we know what is the symbol that is used to denote the set difference operation. This set difference is denoted by the minus symbol. Before stepping into the formal example, let's understand the working of the set difference operation. Then we will see the formal examples. So let's understand the set difference operation. Let's say there is a relation R which contains the set of alphabets A, B, C, D, E and F. And let's say we have another relation S and this S contains characters A, B, dollar, L, Y, 1, hash. And what operation I am going to perform, which is R minus S. And what is the output of R minus S? The set of all elements in R, but not in S. So let's see that now. The element A, which is there in R, which is also there in S. So the output R minus S will not contain this element A. Because the concept of R minus S is the set of elements that are in R but not in S. Here the element A is in S. So we won't have A in the output. Coming to B, this B is in R as well as S. So obviously B will not be there in the output relation. And coming to C, C is there in R but not in S. Can you see there is no C in S. So R minus S means the set of elements that are in R but not in S. So C will be there in the output relation. And coming to the next element D, D is there in R but not in S. So obviously D will be there in the output relation. Coming to E, the element E is there in R and not in S. So E will also be there in the output. And coming to F, F is there in R but not in S. So obviously the result R minus S will contain C, D, E and F. Because C, D, E and F are the set of elements that are there in R but not in S. So with this basic knowledge, let's see the formal example. Example number one, list all customer names, those who have a deposit account but not availed loan. In the previous lecture, which is the union operation, where we have seen the question to list all customer names, those who have a deposit account, also they have availed loan. But here, we need to list all customer names those who have a deposit account, but they have not availed loan. So what's the output? We are going to list all the customer names from the deposit relation minus all the customer names from the loan relation. For this, I'm not going to use select because here we are going to list only the customer names. So here also we are considering the same relations we have seen in the previous lecture. 
the depositor and the borrower relation. So before going into the solution, let's see the table. The depositor table or the depositor relation contains customer name and account number, where the customer name is Tom, Amy, Rose and John. And let's not bother about the account number. And we also have another relation which is borrower, which also contains the customer name and the loan number. Here the customer names are John, Smith, Rose and Jack. Now what we are required to find? We are required to find to list the customer names who have a deposit account. It means they have a deposit account, but they have not availed the loan. If we talk about Tom, Tom has a deposit account, but Tom has not availed the loan because Tom's name is not there in the borrower table. So Tom name should be there in the output. Coming to Amy, Amy is a depositor, but not a borrower. So Amy's name will also be there in the output. Coming to Rose, Rose is a depositor as well as borrower. So we don't want this customer name, Rose. Similarly, John is a depositor as well as a borrower. So for easy readability, we are making this as R. That is the set of all customers from depositor is R. The set of all customer names from borrower is S. And this is the output. Tom and Amy are the customer names. Those who have a depositor account, but they are not borrowers because they have not availed any loan. And what's the query for this? So the answer for this query is we are going to project the customer name from depositor, which is this minus we are going to project the customer name from the borrower relation, which is this. And the output of this expression is going to be a temporary table, which contains all the customer names. And the output of this expression is going to be the set of all customer names from this table. So the output of this is going to contain only one attribute. And the output of this expression is going to be a temporary relation with one attribute. So we are going to perform minus between these two outputs. And here is the answer for example number one. We are done with example number one. Before we see example number two, we need to recap the university database. I request you to pause this video for a while and make a note of this schema. I hope you are done. Let's now proceed with example number two. And example number two is find all the courses taught in fall 2009 semester, but not in spring 2010 semester. So what table we are going to use? I'll bring in the previous slide. What table we are going to use? The table that we are going to use is the section relation because this section relation contains the information about the courses and to which section that course was offered, which semester, which year and other information. So the solution for this is going to be first we are going to retrieve the set of all courses that are taught in fall 2009 semester, which is this part. So the query is going to be very simple. We are going to select all the tuples from section relation where the semester is fall and the year is 2009. So this part I am focusing on. So the output of this inner expression is going to be the set of all tuples where semester is fall and year is 2009. And we are going to retrieve only the courses, right? So I'm going to project only the course ID from this temporary output. So this relational algebra expression gives the output of all course ID taught in fall 2009 semester. And we want to do the same operation for spring 2010. So we are going to find the set of all courses taught in spring 2010 semester. So we write the query like this and this inner query, the select query is going to retrieve the set of all tuples where the semester is spring and year is 2010. And from this output, the temporary relation, which contains all the attributes, I'm going to project only the course ID. Now we have two temporary relations. This is one and this is two. Now what is the question? We want to find all the courses taught in fall 2009 semester, but not in spring, right? So we want to take this minus this. So this will give you the set of all courses that are taught in fall 2009, but not in spring 2010. So to answer the query, we need the minus of these two sets. What do you mean by this? This is the first expression, which is this minus. This is the second expression, which is this. So here is the output of example number two. As the course progresses, I'm not showing the output of the relations in a tabular format. There is a reason for this. Say when we wanted to face some competitive examinations like ISRO or GATE or any other competitive examinations, they might not be giving the tables with data explicitly. We need to make some assumptions. 
and this kind of practice will help us to assume things and solve the problems quickly. Before we sign out, let's see the two important conditions that are to be satisfied for any R minus S to be valid. For R minus S to be valid, the first condition is R and S must be of same arity. It means the relation R and relation S both must be having the same number of attributes or same number of columns. This is also like the same condition we have seen for R union S. And coming to the second condition, for all I, the domain of the ith attribute of the relation R should be the same as that of the domain of the ith attribute of the relation S. So this is also like the same condition we have seen for R union S. If there are two relations R and S, we cannot directly do R minus S because first condition is R and S must be of same arity. Let's say the relation R has 10 columns or attributes and relation S has 9 attributes. So we cannot simply perform R minus S because both are differing in terms of the number of attributes. But in the example what we have seen, we have projected only one column and then only we did the minus operation between the projections. I'll show that now. So what we have done here, this is the projection which contains only course ID and this is another projection that is also containing only course ID. So the output is going to be a temporary relation with only one column and the output of this is also going to be a temporary relation with only one column. So minus is being performed on two different temporary relations which is having only one column and condition number one is satisfied because both are having same arity and coming to the second condition. The domain of the course ID here also it is course ID and here also it is course ID and this course ID and this course ID are belonging to the same table or the same relation section. So obviously the domain of the course ID is the same in both the relations. And that's it guys. I hope the set difference operation in relational algebra is clear to you. Before we sign out, let's see the homework questions. In this presentation also we have two homework questions. Let's see the first question. This is homework question number one. We are given with two relations, relation R and relation S. In the example, what we have seen in this presentation is we computed or we found out R minus S. But what you are required to find is S minus R. So I request you to perform the S minus R relational algebra operation and find out what are all the elements that this temporary relation will contain. Remember, the output of the relational algebra expression is going to be a temporary relation with the elements. Now you are required to find what are all the elements of this set S minus R. So this is about homework question number one and coming to homework question number two. For this, I am going to project the same university database schema which we have been addressing in this lecture series. The same university schema with the instructor, course, department, section, teacher, student, advisor, takes, classroom and time slot relations. Here we have two questions. Question number one is list all the instructors ID who are not advisors. We are required to find all the instructors ID. It's not the instructors ID that exists in the instructor relation directly. If this is the case, we can simply do project ID from instructor. But the question is actually list all the instructors ID who are not advisors. So what we are understanding here is we have an instructor relation. We also have an advisor relation and what we understand is not all instructors are advisors and what we are required to find. We are required to find only the instructors ID who are not advisors. So I'll give you a clue. So for this you need to involve two tables or two relations. The relations are instructor relation and advisor relation. And we know the title of this presentation is actually set difference and we are going to seek the help of set difference operation in order to find the answer for this. So use it wisely and retrieve all the instructors ID who are not advisors. And coming to question number two, list all the instructors ID who taught in spring 2020 but not advisors. So I'm adding some more complexity to the previous question where we are going to list all the instructors ID. This instructor should have taught at least one subject in the semester spring in the year 2020. So we are required to list all the instructors ID who taught in spring 2020, but they are not advisors. As mentioned in the previous presentation, these kind of questions will help us to know more about the relational algebra operations and certainly it will help us to crack the competitive examination questions. And in this presentation, we focused on the set difference operation 
In the next presentation, we will focus on the Cartesian product relational algebra operation. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.